Hi everyone, this is Hazem Sultan, Real Estate Advisor with Remax here in Vancouver. And today we're uh, happy to have Jimmy Lee Tang, Chartered Professional Accountant here with us today to answer some of the questions that we have about real estate. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for making the time to be with us. Oh, thank you, Hazem, for having me here. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you and your audience today. Always happy to help. Absolutely. So uh, uh, obviously we're going to be talking about taxation. It's, it's a big topic. But sort of uh, for some of the viewers that are newcomers here in, in Canada, uh, can you give us a brief uh, summary or sort of overview of taxation here? What are the taxes that we you might encounter or the services that you might actually get uh, in return of those taxes that are paid? Absolutely. One of the things I find a lot with newcomers is that they are surprised with the amount of taxes that we have here right. uh, in Canada and specifically in the Lower Mainland. Uh, if you can think about it, there's probably a tax on it. So there's you know taxes for buying things. Those are sales taxes. Taxes for working. That's income taxes. Right. Taxes on just owning property. That's property taxes. Uh, so there's a huge broad category of taxes out there. But you know, for in exchange for those taxes, you get things like roads, bridges, right. hospitals education, garbage service, right? right. I mean, a lot right. of those things are paid for through our tax dollars. Absolutely. And uh, uh, also you touched on sales tax. So sales tax, we've got GST and we've got PST. PST, that's Can right. Can you just explain to us the difference between those? Absolutely. So GST is a federal tax levied by the Canadian federal government. It's 5% on substantially everything that you buy unless there's a specific exemption. Right. PST is applicable on tangible goods. So not mm -hmm. charged on services, although there are some exceptions to that. Right. Uh, but primarily PST is charged on anything that you buy that is a see it, touch it, feel it kind of a thing. Right. Tax rate is 7%. So realistically, it's a 12% tax rate 12%. On, your, uh, uh, on your consumption of goods and services. Okay, perfect. So you touched on, uh, on personal income. Can you give us an idea of the tax brackets that are there or what uh, maybe a, a newcomer might expect? Sure. So in income taxes here in Canada, at least, we have a, a graduated rate system. So mm -hmm. There are different tax rates for the various different levels of income that you have. And one of the misconceptions is that once you are in a higher tax bracket, all of your income is subject to that higher tax bracket. And that's not true at all. Right. So can you the, give us an example? Maybe yes. if someone is making, let's say, 100000 per month. Sure. Or per so, year, rather. Sorry. Yeah. So generally speaking, the first $13,000 is not going to be subject to tax because mm -hmm. we have things like personal tax credits that will effectively make the first $13,000 tax free. Right. Beyond that, you've got a 25% tax bracket as the first step, and then it just kind of goes up from there, uh, usually in about thirty to forty thousand dollar increments. But right. it really depends because there's different tax rates by the province, mm -hmm. uh, as well as well the federal government. But then the province have their own different rates. So when you right. combine those rates and combine the different brackets, you get a multitude right. of different tax brackets. And uh, we talked about this before the video as well, is that the system that we have, the taxation system, is actually progressive. It is unique mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, there's a common misconception. Some people say, well, uh, if I make X amount of money, that's going to put me in a certain bracket. Therefore, I'm going to be actually paying more uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily the case. It's just that the, the, the extra tax or the bracket only applies to that portion of income. That's correct. Okay, so okay, it is. Perfect. It is. So only that amount of income that you have that is in that higher bracket mm -hmm. will be taxed at that bracket rate. Right. The rest of your income and the lower tax rates will be taxed at those lower rates. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Let's dive into some of the, maybe the real estate questions. Sure. Obviously, when it comes to real estate, there is. There's a plethora of taxes. There's a lot of taxes here in Vancouver. But for a newcomer, what are some of the taxes that a newcomer should keep in mind? Sure. When you're buying real estate here, there's uh, if it's new residential property we're talking about, there's going to be a 5% GST tax rate on that. Right. Uh, if it's used residential property, there's no GST. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, your typical closing costs will include things like your property transfer taxes. Uh, that's a really big one too. And, and that, I believe, uh, is like 1% or 2%. Right. Um, Hazem will probably we've, know that better. We, than we've I done will. a video about that as well. I'll, I'll link that video there as well on top there. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of, of acquisition of property, those are the two main things: is GST and your property transfer taxes. Right. In addition to your other closing costs. Right. Okay. Uh, so we talked about this. This is for a newcomer. Uh, obviously, uh, if someone doesn't have uh, their PR yet, let's say they're a foreign national, 
Is there an extra tax or layer of tax? Yeah, that might be absolutely. I'm happy you brought that up. Uh, that's called the foreign buyer's tax, and that will be applicable in specified regions of, um, of BC. So the foreign buyer's tax is a provincial tax, not charged by the federal government, but mm -hmm. charged by the provincial government here in BC. Right. And it is only applicable on class one residential property, uh, as well as in specified areas only. Right. So not all of BC is subject to the foreign buyer's tax. It's, uh, it's just in certain areas. Right. And in fact, just yesterday I was reading the newspaper, they've, the federal, sorry, the provincial government has expanded those areas to include a little bit further up on Vancouver Island. Uh, but more specifically in this area, Squamish is now included under the foreign buyers tax too. So that's oh, actually just, Squamish now. That, yeah, so that's, that's actually just new news uh, as of yesterday, actually. Right. So um, squ that's going to come into effect at the beginning of 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, and effectively that imposes an additional tax right. on the acquisition of residential property property by persons who are not Canadian citizens okay, okay. or does not hold a permanent residency. Okay, so let's say we have a, a newcomer, someone that has their PR, uh, they've already gotten their, their SIN number, they're ready to go, they're not subject to the foreign buyer tax. Uh, we've talked about the GSD, we've talked about, uh, uh, well, essentially a property transfer tax as well, which is a separate calculation. Uh, we want to talk actually about capital gains tax mm -hmm. and uh, the principal residence exemption because there's a lot of new newcomers that are not aware of these things. Yeah. Uh, let's say, let's give a scenario here. Let's say someone buys a property now for a million dollars and they want to sell it in five years time and it's probably worth like, let's say 1.2. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the tax implications that a newcomer should keep in mind there when they're exiting or when they're selling that property? Absolutely. So here in Canada, we you pay income taxes on something called the capital gain. And a capital gain is where you sell a particular asset for more than what you uh, had bought it for. Right. So in Hazem's example, selling for $1.2 million on a purchase price of $1 million. And of course, ignoring other adjustments to your right. cost, there's a $200,000 capital gain there. Of that $200,000, 50% of it is not taxable. So that's mm -hmm. tax-free portion. Right. And the other half is taxable. So in your example, $100,000 would be taxable. And that $100,000 taxable capital gain is added to the taxpayer's income in the year in which the property was sold. Mm -hmm. So touching back on the personal tax brackets previously, right. now with another $100,000 of income on your uh, income tax return, that $100,000 might be taxed at a much higher tax rate because of the graduated rates that we have. And depending on their income that year as well. Exactly. So it gets all added up then. It does get added up. So if you are, if you're a high income earner and you already have significant income from other sources like employment and other investment income, right. the highest tax bracket in BC is 53 and a half percent. So you add another hundred thousand dollars to that. If you're already in the highest tax bracket, you're right. going to be cutting a check to the CRA for $53,500 on right. that capital gain. Right. 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 So th th this, uh, okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This only applies if it's a, in a, in, in a real estate context, if it's a residential, uh, uh, investment property. Right, right. Right. But what if that property is your principal residence? Does does that change things? Do, do we still have capital gains tax that we have to deal with? Absolutely. So we do have something called the principal residence exemption here in Canada. Uh, that is applicable to properties that qualify as a principal residence. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, you know, without belaboring the entire video, there are qualifying criteria. So do look into what the qualifying criteria would be. Right. But let's just assume that the property does qualify as a principal residence. The taxpayer in the year in which the property is sold on that tax return will designate the property as a principal residence and will mm -hmm. claim the principal residence exemption. And by doing so, will in fact entirely exempt that capital gain. Mm. And so going back, no so income going taxes. back, exactly. So going back to our scenario where someone bought a property for a million dollars, they sell it for one point two in a couple of years' time. Uh, essentially, that two hundred thousand goes into their pocket tax free. Tax free. Okay, interesting. Absolutely. See, Amazing. So that's a, that's a huge advantage. I mean, we are a sort of taxation is a huge thing here in in, in Vancouver, especially sort of. Uh, on the way in and on the way out. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what about holding taxes there? You know, during the time where you're actually holding the property, is there any taxes that might apply to you? Sure. So in terms of holding uh, taxes, the, during your period of ownership, if you are renting the property out, then you're earning income. So of course you got rental income. Right. You, you do get to deduct your rental expenses. Uh, so that should bring your net rental income down. Right. And the, the net rental income is then just added to your income for the year. And right. then you get taxed based on whatever tax rate you might be in. 
Right. Okay. Um, if it's a property where you're living in as your principal residence and there's no rental, there's no basement suite rental, then it's just a personal use property. Right. You're not going to be able to deduct any of the expenses related to that property because it's a personal use property. Right. So in effect, there's really no tax issue mm -hmm. when we're talking about personal use properties. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, th there are, uh, however, BC speculation tax and we have a Vancouver empty homes tax. Mm -hmm. So th this is an area where it's a bit of a gray area, honestly, for, for some newcomers. And when they talk to me, they say, well, okay, we've, we've got the property transfer tax on the way in, but we've heard about the BC speculation tax and the, and the empty homes tax. And mm -hmm. actually, some people think that it's the same tax, yeah. which in fact, it's not. It's not. You're right. In fact, the uh, if you have a property in Vancouver, you're subject to two types of taxes for holding the property if you are not qualified for an exemption. Mm -hmm. So the Vancouver empty homes tax is the city of Vancouver tax and the BC speculation tax is a provincial BC tax and it only applies to specific types of properties. Now of course I won't get into the political background in terms of how that, that tax came about, but obviously many people know we do have a bit of a housing crunch around here, yeah. not enough supply and renters are really being squeezed. So in an effort to increase rental supply, there's a tax if you have residential property, are not living in it as your primary residence right. uh, and are not uh, including in the rental pool. So you're not mm -hmm. having somebody else rent it. So in effect, it's an empty home. Right. right. That might be a secondary property for you that is a vacation property, right. uh, but otherwise it would be empty the rest of the year. So there is a tax mm -hmm. if you choose to leave your property unoccupied. Right. right? Absolutely. So, and again, just going back to a situation here, let's say that first buyer that bought that investment property for $1 million, let's say they bought it in the city of Vancouver. So now it seems like there's two layers of taxes that they have to be aware of, and then depending on their use, they have to declare every single year that hey um, um, how are you using it are you using right. it as, as a principal residence are you using it are you renting it out at least so you would not be subject to right uh to, to the taxes there uh but can you give us an idea of the tax percentage for empty homes tax and bc speculation yeah absolutely so in terms of the vancouver empty homes tax and the bc speculation tax on a combined basis that should be approximately three percent for those persons who do not qualify for the exemption mm -hmm. and you are a foreign national to canada so in other words you're not a canadian you're you don't pay income taxes here in canada you don't reside here right. so for those persons who reside here pay income taxes in canada but have an empty home here in BC in, in those specified regions, uh, then I believe the BC speculation tax rate is a half percent on that. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. And uh, just so we touched on on the taxes on the way in, holding the property as well. But let's say when you're exiting and you're selling that property there, uh, let's say that person is when they bought it, they had their PR. There was mm -hmm. no foreign buyer tax, but on the way out, they were a non-resident, so they were they already had their PR or even citizenship. Mm -hmm. They were, they are a citizen of Canada, but when they wanted to sell that property, uh, let's say they were living in Dubai or Saudi Arabia or whatever. Yeah. Uh, now, is there any withhold, withholding tax, any, anything that, that we should be aware of? Absolutely. So on the way out, if you are a non-resident of Canada for income taxes, uh, that's a very big thing in terms of, of determining where you pay your income taxes, where you reside. Um, if you are a non-resident for income tax purposes and you sell taxable Canadian property of which real estate is included, there's an entire set of uh, hoops that you have to jump through. The biggest one being obtaining the clearance certificate from the Canada Revenue Agency. That clearance certificate effectively allows the Canada Revenue Agency to ensure that you pay all of your taxes, both rental income taxes, if there are any, capital gains taxes, etc. It's a huge 25% at the time of sale. So 25% of your total sale price is withheld inside your lawyer's trust account. You okay. then should hire an accountant to go and help you get that clearance certificate. Mm -hmm. You would calculate your actual capital gain and the amount of money that you would send to the CRA is 25% of your capital gain. Uh, that would be your upfront withholding taxes. Right. And then, of course, when you go and you file your re non-resident tax return later on, there is an opportunity for you to recover much of the withholding taxes. But the reason why the withholding taxes are so high is that if you choose not to file the non-resident tax return, the government gets to keep the rest of your money. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that makes, that makes perfect sense. You know what, Jimmy, this has been really informative. There's awesome. lots of questions. There's lots of topics. 
But I do appreciate you actually being with us again. And uh, obviously, if, wanted, uh, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, how could they reach out to you? Absolutely. I'll leave Hazem with my, my contact details, but you can reach me at 604-260-7303 or send me an email at jimmy at jltcpa.ca. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we'll be able to address them in future videos. Great. Thank you. Thank you.